Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential rational equation or a rational exponential equation. We have 169 minus 16 to the power x divided by 13 minus 4 to the power x and that is equal to 77. And we're going to be looking for x values. What else can we look for, right? So to be able to solve this problem, I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. For my first method, I want to go ahead and cross multiply. Okay, so this will give me 169 minus 16 to the power x equals 77 times 13 minus 4 to the power x. Great. Now let's go ahead and simplify this expression by using the distributive property. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 77 by 13. This is important. 77 is 7 times 11. And this is like 7, 11, 13. I'm not talking about a store here. It's a product. When you multiply these three numbers, you know what happens? You get 1001. Why is that happening? Because that's what it is, right? There's no good reason. But that's a very important number because if you multiply this by a three-digit number like ABC, then you basically get the same number twice, ABC, ABC. Okay? Anyways, that's a different story. Let's get back to the problem. So we're going to go ahead and put these together, but let's go ahead and put the 16 to the power X on the right hand side and bring the 169 over. Now we're going to go ahead and subtract these numbers, right? There's a really cool way to subtract two numbers when you have a case like this, because there's going to be a lot of carries and transfers. So why don't we just reduce this number by two and do the same thing here and subtract this way going to be a lot easier. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? The answer is going to be the same, of course, because the difference doesn't change. So from here, we're going to get 832. What does that give you? That gives you a quadratic equation. How does that work? We're going to go ahead and use substitution. Let's go ahead and call this something. How about t? Okay, this gives us t squared minus 77t equals 832, but I'm going to bring the 832 over because I'm going to try to factor this. Okay, so here's our goal. We are trying to find two numbers whose product is negative 832, and those numbers have to add up to negative 77. If you can find those numbers, then this will be factorable, or its factor will be factored, or you can use the quadratic formula. But if you set up the quadratic formula, let's try negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is going to give us the following. And this is going to be somewhat complicated because we need to find 77 squared, which is a large number, and then this, and then add them up, and then try to square root that if there's a perfect square, of course, so on and so forth. So you might as well just try the factoring method because that seems a little easier. I don't know. We'll, we'll give it a try. I don't know the answer. So 832, let's go ahead and try uh, to factor this number first. 832 can be written as 2 times 416, which is 2 times 2 times 2 of 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 1 of 4, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 52, and then it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 26, and then you can factor the 26 and that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times, two times whatever, however many 2's you need, and at the end 13. So the prime factorization for this number is basically 2 to the power 6 times 13 or 16 times, that doesn't make sense though, right? 16 times 13, I don't think it's going to be 832, so I probably missed something somewhere, who knows? Let's go ahead and check it out. This is 416, yes. That is 208, yep. And then 4 times 208, that makes sense. 2 times 2 times 2, 8 times 104, that still makes sense. Half of 104 is 52, that's going to be 16. Oh, okay, that's, that's not 16. What am I talking about? Sorry about that. I meant 64 times 13. I thought 2 to the power 6 was 16, which is not true, obviously. So this makes sense. Okay, great. So that's my. those are my factors, but guess what? 
I want the sum to be negative 7 to 7. Aha, uh -huh. I got it. Here we go. So, but they both have to be negative, obviously, which makes sense. Negative 64 and negative 13. Notice that their sum is negative 77. Good, good. We got it. So now, obviously, that's much better than quadratic formula, but factoring was a little, you know, time consuming, but that's okay. You get the idea, hopefully. This will work, right? And now we're going to write it as t minus 64 times t minus 13. Of course, 64 was expected because t was 4 to the x, so we might as well just go with powers of 4. But again, there were a lot of 2s, so we could get that. Now, from here, we get the following. Let's get rid of this first. Okay, We have t equals 64 or t equals 13. Now, if t is equal to 64, which is 4 to the power x, from here, x equals 3 is a solution. If t equals 13, what happens? You must use logs, right? We, if we can uh, log both sides or ln, whatever, it doesn't matter. But let's use base 4, which makes sense in this case, right? This would be x, and then this would be 1. So x would be log 13 with base 4. Okay, that would be the answer. So are there two possible answers to this equation? Let's go ahead and check with the, what's it called? The original equation, okay. So if, now notice that I don't really need to know x to be able to check my work. I only need four to the power x. Obviously, if four to the x is equal to 64, then we can just replace it with 64. And that's gonna give me 64 here and 64 squared here. That will be 2 to the power 12, which is 4096, right? Okay, great. And that seems to work because, I mean, it should. It's a solution and it doesn't really cause any issues. But if you look at the other solution, Houston, we have a problem. What is that problem? If 4 to the x is 13, then, uh-oh, we're, we're going to get a 0 at the bottom. You don't want that. So... This solution is invalid. We can only go with x equals 3. x equals 3 is the only solution. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because the second method will really make this much more clear. And that's why it's the second method. Okay, ready? Now, notice that this is difference of two squares. This is 13 squared. This is 4 to the power x squared. So now by using that identity, we can go ahead and factor the numerator into two factors, right? From difference of two squares. And that eliminates the problem, right? If 4 to the x does not equal 13, we can cross these out. Notice that 4 to the x should not be 13. But 4 to the x plus 13 should be 77, which means 4 to the power x equals 64, which means x equals 3. Thank you. Case closed. All right. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.